And for more on the global shipping industry, we're now joined by Jean-Paul Rodrigue, professor at the Department of Global Studies and Geography at Hofstra University. Jean-Paul, good to have you on the show. Pleasure to, have, to be there. Let's focus on China's rejection of this P3 network, the shipping alliance. Why did China say no? It's pretty much prote protecting its strategic interest. China is an export-based economy, and it was facing a situation where its shipping lines will have lose market share in, 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 in the situation of the dominance of the proposed P3 alliance. So there was nothing in the deal for China? Uh, let's say very limited benefits out of it. What is the significance of China flexing its veto muscle? What message does that send? It tells that it's going to do what it wants when it needs to protect its strategic commercial interests, when it feels that it's been potentially undermined for, for its exports. Now, what were the proposed advantages of such an alliance? It's basically the shipping lines are desperate. The, the global shipping industry is hurting. It has ordered a, large, a lot of large ships. And now the, larger, the largest shipping lines are putting their, let's say, eggs together to try to build an alliance to give them a competitive advantage and to use their, uh, let's say, the assets that they have in, in surplus. The three top players did say that this was to cut prices and to help the industry, which is facing overcapacity. You agree with that consensus? No, not that much. It's obviously for cutting prices. They're going to be put themselves in a competitive ad advantage, but they will have been in some kind of a semi-monopoly situation, which will have bankrupt smaller shipping lines, including potentially Chinese carriers, such as Costco, will have been facing problems to competing with Do such a big player. Do you think that the global shipping industry is at risk of overcapacity right now? What is your outlook on the overall status of the industry? Since the financial crisis, the shipping industry has been in a situation of chronic overcapacity, and it's going to be enduring for, for, for years to come. It hasn't recovered since the crisis? We're still at low levels? The trade has recovered. It's above uh, past uh, crisis levels. However, there are so many ships coming on and bigger ships that it is, pay, uh, let's say, the shipping industry is having a very difficult time sh filling them because there's not enough global trade to fill up those ships. So what needs to happen for the shipping industry to be fully revived? Oh, global trade has to increase quite substantially or a few companies will have to cut their assets to have to curtail their capacity, at least on the short, medium term until the global trade catches up, if it, if it does. Now, in the meantime, you mentioned Costco. That's the big Chinese global shipping giant that has taken a, a stake in one of Greek's ports, as we saw in Filio Contrafuri's report in Piraeus. What is the advantage for Chinese companies to now be taking ownership of various Greek ports? Uh, China sees the Greek financial issue as an opportunity to capture assets at very low prices. Uh, since China cannot be, let's say, own other ports in Europe because they're already operated by uh, competing companies, the Greek situation offered China an opportunity to get itself a foot in Europe, to get itself uh, some form of a gateway in Europe. It has nothing to do or very little to do with the Greek economy itself, which is essentially bankrupt. So it's basically strategic from a geographic point of yeah. view. Positioning yourself in a market which is a major export. So, venue for you. So using the geographic proximity as a gateway to the rest of Europe. Yes. Uh, 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 Pyrus is a major transshipment hub. That is, uh, cargo is transshipped to the other parts of Europe. And China is going to be using this in its shipping line to its, to its advantage. Is this mutually beneficial to Greece as well? Uh, yes, to some extent. When you're bankrupt and you want to sell your assets, uh, you, want to find a, you want to find a taker. So uh, Greek will get some kind of a budgetary relief out of this. And China will get some kind of a, of a, of a gateway in Europe. Is China, though, bolstering the local Greek economy by investing more capital into these ports and creating jobs and activity? Indeed, it's going to create some bonuses in terms of infrastructure investment, in terms of also of efficient terminal operation. China is very good, or Chinese shipping lines are very good at managing their assets. Right. So it's going to be, of, of course, essentially positive for the Greek economy. China is... Uh looking at some of the other ports, if it doesn't get sold to China, who else could step in and buy them? Uh, there are many, not that many companies basically interested because most of the terminal operators are not faring that well. They have also, as a shipping line, they have somewhat overextended themselves. So there might be some kind of a private or smaller companies interested in the process. But I must say, uh, not that many. So there's really not much competition for China coming in and buying Greece's ports? 
what we'll find out in a sense. Uh, those bids are not too much disclosed. China is the most, I can I say, that vocal th player in, in this process. But I'm sure there are other uh, companies, internal operators, basically in, in, the, ba in the back right. talking about it. All right, we'll be watching that closely. Thank you for your perspective and insight. Jean-Paul Rodrigue, professor at the Department of Global Studies and Geography at Hofstra University here in New York.